Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we've gathered here unto you tonight. Lord, asking for your Holy Spirit to come, fill each heart, open the ears to hear, Lord, what the Spirit has to say. I pray, Lord, that your heart is revealed tonight, that the message reveals what's in your heart for us to hear, to know, to understand, that we, we may grow and learn to walk in your way, Lord, that you may lead us. O oh Lord, search our reins and our hearts and lead us in the way that is right, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the blessing of your presence. And Lord, may your spirit pour out into each according to your goodwill, Lord. And may your kingdom come and your will be done here tonight in earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to uh, continue talking about anger. Um, we started a short series on this a couple weeks ago. And uh, there's, there's still more. Um, as I mentioned, this applies to other areas of our lives that we struggle with, not just anger. It could be fear, discouragement, guilt, so many things. But uh, the principles are the same to understand the source of these emotions that are not of God. Now, anger is different from some of these other emotions because there is righteous anger and there's unrighteous anger. So we need to discern the difference, but most of these don't have a righteous counterpart. There's no righteousness in fear unless it's fear of the Lord. But um, the difference, we look, look at a difference between unrighteous anger and righteous anger is that God is slow to anger. And unrighteous anger flares up quickly. When we sense that anger is flaring up quickly, it's self-righteous anger. It's not of God. Now we can be convinced, if we, especially if we're very religious, we can be convinced that our anger is justified. But if it's flaring up quickly, it's not of God. The scripture tells us God is slow to anger. And we talked about last time about unrighteous anger it comes when we see that something is not in our image. It's not what we expect. It's not what we think it should be. Someone's not doing what we think they should do. A situation's not working out how we think it should work out. Because we have an image, this is how things are. But it's not our world. It's God's. And we need to understand he will work things according to his image, not ours. So we can become angry with God when something doesn't work out. We think it's God, but it's us. Because we, got, we have to shift our focus. We're quick to anger because we very quickly recognize when something is not in our image. We're less quick to recognize whether something's in God's image because we don't we see through a glass darkly. We don't see so clearly as we as we should. But when it's our image, we see very clearly. And we're very quick to anger. But this can be helpful to us. Just because we start feeling angry, it's not a sin. What do we do with that? If this unrighteous anger starts flaring up in a situation. It's revealing what we're seeking. It's revealing what's in our heart. So it tells us we're seeking something of our own, something not of God, if we're quick to anger over it. And it may not always be apparent or clear what's the source. Why am I getting angry? Sometimes we're in a situation where we're not sure. 
I'm getting angry and I don't understand why. What about this situation is starting to do something in me? But if we take that and seek the Lord and say, Lord, help me, you know, what, what is this in me that I need to lay down? You see, Jesus had righteous anger. When he went to the temple and he overturned the tables, it was righteous anger. And the reason was because what was going on in God's house was not in God's image. And God has a right to be angry. It's his house. Now, if we think about that, there are, there are personal implications of that. But there are also church-wide, corporate implications of this. What's going on in our house? We're still seeking our image. We'll get angry if something is going on in our house, affecting us, not necessarily our physical building we dwell in, but affecting us internally, our house. We'll get angry because it's not in our image. But we have no right to that because we belong to the Lord. We are His. We are to be in His house. So what affects us is to be according to His image, not our own. And that's on an individual level and as a corporate body. But we see what's going on in the churches, what's going on individually. Are we seeking our image or God's? Is a, the, the, a church as a corporate body seeking its own image or God's? You understand? Because this has implications about how people and churches, even denominations, react to something that is affecting their image. Sometimes when we're dealing with this issue of anger, it comes down to we need to allow past traumas in our heart to be healed by the Lord. Okay? I'm not suggesting anyone has to overcome their own anger. We don't have the strength to do it. We need the Lord's help. But it requires allowing Him to come in and heal areas in our heart and stop holding on to those areas that are causing us to be angry. Because it may be when, long ago as a child, even, that something violated our image. And we're still angry about it. And we need to let it go. And let God heal. And then we will be able to overcome if we do that. So it's when we're seeking our own things of ourself, when we're trying to elevate ourself, and again, on an individual level and on a corporate level as a church, trying to elevate itself. Self being in control, all of these things. Basically when our focus is not on Christ, but our goals, we become angered when something is not fitting into our plan. When something is not fitting into our preconceived idea, our notion, our thought, our mindset, about a situation or an agenda. So when we're not seeking the mind of Christ in a matter, which is what we should always do, we should always seek the mind of Christ in a situation. But when we're not doing that, we can become angry with what God is doing because it doesn't suit us. That wasn't in our plan. Have we ever gone into something we believe is the Lord and we've had expectations going into it that weren't the Lord? See, God tells us this much and we say, okay, and we go, but we add our expectations to what God said. And it seems innocent, but what happens when we get there and find out, that's not what I expected. But God told me, but it's not what I expected. And we get angry with God. But it's not God, it's because of us. We were looking for our image of what God was doing, not what God was doing. Everything God is doing is in alignment with His 
eternal thought. He, he doesn't think in the temporary. He thinks eternally. He's eternal. So everything he does affects, has an eternal effect in our lives. We think in the temporary. And we talked about Jonah last time. Jonah's thinking, well, this gourd's keeping me out of that hot sun. That's good. And God's thinking, I'm going to get this anger out of this man or it's going to affect him eternally. So we have to consider when our mind is wrong, when, when it's off, when our focus is on something other than the Lord, and when anger starts coming up with us, or other feelings, fear, guilt, condemnation, it's not of God, something not of God is coming up in us, what are we focusing on? What voice are we listening to? We talked about that on Sunday. What voice are we listening to? And it can help get us back on track when we recognize it and seek the Lord. So I want to go over some scriptural examples because all of this has implication for the coming days if we understand what's coming. I believe that's why the Lord's wanting me to go over this more. Um, <clears throat> look at John 7.23 If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision that the law of Moses should not be broken. Are ye angry at me, because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? You see, they were angry because he healed someone on the Sabbath. But why was that? It was because the man who was healed was being made into Christ's image, not theirs. See, if someone was following the law of Moses and being made into their image, more religious on the Sabbath, they would have been happy. But this broke that. This man was being made into Christ's image. And they were angry with him. Anyone focused on themselves. The same thing will happen when Christ increases and something is threatening them. They're going to have to decrease. They'll become angry. And what do they say? We will lose our place. We will lose our place. Because their image is not humble. It's not, we're down here and it's all about Christ. It's not, I must decrease and Christ must increase. So they become angry. They don't comprehend that. And we talk about the future here. Revelation 11.18 and the nations were angry. And your wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that you should give reward unto your servants and the prophets and to the saints, and to them that fear your name, small and great, and should destroy them which destroy the earth. So it talks about the coming time where the nations are angry. And why are they angry? Because of the revelation of Christ. Because the image of Christ is coming in. There is a change. The image of Christ is increasing in a people. And the nations are becoming angry. Because their image has no place in the kingdom of God that they see increasing around them. This world is passing away. And when they see the image of Christ, the anger comes. But they're following their own lusts for a world that's passing away. So why, why do we follow our own lusts for a world that's passing away and get angry when the kingdom of God is coming in? And we're angry because we see those lusts no longer fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Unfulfilled fleshly lusts, unrighteous, selfish, self-righteous anger. That's what comes in the nations. Whenever we see something hindering those lusts, we're going to see the anger come. And that's why many cannot tolerate the preaching of truth because it starts to hinder those lusts. 
and it reveals there's something in the flesh seeking its own rather than Christ. A natural man likes to hide in the shadows. He doesn't want that exposed. Okay. There are those that hate the kingdom of God because it's not theirs. It's not theirs. Philippians 2.21 for all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ's. Seeking their own rather than the kingdom of God. Can we understand the danger that is in the church that is seeking its own rather than the kingdom of God? Can we see the setup for what's going to happen later? We may think that we're justified. We may think we have righteous anger when it's only self-righteous anger. It have, we can be deceived. It's very easy to say, well, that's not going to be me. We can be deceived. Paul, when he was Saul, thought he was doing the right thing until the Lord showed him otherwise. We need to seek the Lord's will and not presume that we know it. Just judgment, if we want to judge righteously, it requires that we seek the Father's will in all areas, not just what we think is right. Titus 1 verse 7, For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre. A qualification for a bishop, not soon angry. Why? Because the degree to which we are quickly angry indicates how little Christ is in us. Because God is slow to anger. Therefore, a bishop must be slow to anger. Why? Because he must be filled with Christ. It's not talking about someone who can restrain their anger and hide it. It's talking about a man or a woman who is filled with Christ and has overcome to where they don't become quickly angry at a situation. And they have time to seek the Father's will. How do I handle this situation? What, what, what is your will, Lord, in this situation? They don't react so quickly to it. A bishop's interest must be Christ and Christ's image, not his own. That, that's what it's speaking about. Those called into ministry, because God calls us before we're there. Those called into ministry must get over this issue and realize it is not for our interest, for our image, to do any type of ministry. We are not called for any reason for our image and our interest. It is for Christ and Christ's image. And we need to understand that. Because it's not going to be our image. The sheep must also recognize whose image is being sought in all the situations in our life. What is God doing in your life? It's not for you and your image. It's for His image in you. So we need to be seeking God, not ourself, given over to God's will, given over to God's will, not our own lusts, desires, and ambitions. That's where a lot of these negative emotions stem from. They come from this. There's something in us. We're born with it. And if we're soon angry, quickly angry, that is a way of telling that there's still a lot of self-will in something. We're not fully given over to God's will in that area. And I'm, I'm focusing on this a lot, I know, but it is important, very important to understand for the coming days how important it is for us to be given over to God's will. Truly given over to God's will. We can kid ourselves and think, I'm given over to God's will and we're not. He can show us very quickly how little of us is under His will versus our will. 
And if we don't start turning more and more over to him, it's going to be a lot more difficult with what's coming. We need to do that. He, this, it's, it's like a warning. When we start to see this rising up within us, we need to turn it over to the Lord and get this purged out of us now. Because there's going to come a time when it's going to make a, a big difference. Proverbs 14, 17 says, He that is soon angry deals foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. Quick anger, it says foolishly. Another way of translating that is godless. Quick anger is godless. Why? Because God is slow to anger. Quick anger is godless. It is a godless way of dealing with things. That may touch some toes because we like to think of ourselves, well, I'm, I'm just this way. My daddy was this way and that's just how I am. Or I'm of a certain ethnic group and, well, that's just how we are. Well, that's the flesh. It's all the flesh. And we need to understand it. It's godless. Sometimes we need to hear a hard word to recognize it and realize we do need to deal with it and not just write it off and say, well, that's how I am. It's a godless way of dealing with things. So when we are quick to anger, what we're showing is our lack of Christ. We are showing our godlessness in an area. And I'm, I'm not saying this to condemn anybody. And don't take this to someone you know who's angry and say, Ah, this is not the purpose. It is to reflect on ourselves, seek the Lord, and it is to help us reveal the source of the problem that we're struggling with. Help us reveal the source so we can seek the Lord and have victory in these areas. That we can walk away from this godlessness and be filled with Christ. And have Him be our strength in the coming days rather than our godlessness and our wisdom. Because we're not going to go down a good path if we follow that. If we follow our own will, our own image, it's not going to go well. We need Him now. We need him now. The time is very short. It is very short. Ecclesiastes 7, 9. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. Anger rests in the bosom of godless people. Because remember, the beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When we are godless, we have no fear of the Lord. And we have no wisdom. We may think we do. But we have no wisdom. Thus the word fools. And the fool says in his heart, there is no God. The godless says in his heart, there is no God. Foolishness is a godless state of being, a godless way of doing things. It's not wise. Why? Because all wisdom rests in Christ. When we do it without Him, it's not going to go well. We see a lot of young people out there seeking their own without the Lord's input. Well, I need to go find my life, what I want, my dream. And they're off doing it on their own without the Lord's input. It's foolishness. It, it is. We have, we have young people tell us this. We had a young man recently tell us this. Well, I just need to go out. Every, every young man needs to go do his thing and find his place. And without the Lord's input, if we are wise, we will hear that and we will seek the Lord and our life is going to go much better. How many older people, if you're young, look at the older people that you've known. How many of them look back in their lives and say, I was foolish. I was stupid. Do you want to take the same path? There's a lot of young people here tonight. Do you want to take the same path? Or do you want to be wise and seek the Lord and say, Lord, what is your will for me? What is your will for my life? What is your will in this situation? 
because it'll work out a lot better. It might be hard to hear when you're young, but it's true. And I know a lot of older people would rather go back to being young and redo it God's way if they had a chance. So it's a blessing you can hear that tonight, and I, I hope you, the Lord can touch your heart and you'll seek His will in decisions that you're making. You're growing up in a very difficult time in history. So it says the godless have anger resting in their bosom because their God is their self and their will is not God's. There's a spirit of anger in them, not the Holy Spirit. It's a self issue. It's not Christ. Proverbs 29, 22, An angry man stirs up strife, and a furious man abounds in transgression. We've heard it said there are, there are people that like to stir the pot just to see what it smells like. Well, they're angry. And sometimes they don't want to show it outright, so they'll stir others up and then take pleasure watching the anger in others. It's the same, same thing. Don't be a pot stirrer. Don't be a partaker. Don't be friends with someone who is a pot stirrer. And we see this. We see it in the home. There's a family member just stirring things up. We see it at school, at the job, in the church. There's always a pot stirrer who comes in, stirring things up, trying to put things in their image. In relationships, why is there all this arguing? Because somebody is seeking their own, not Christ. And the more angry we are, the more we abound in transgression. Because the more self that is still in us, that's not Christ. It's not to condemn. It's to have a realistic assessment of where we're at and humble ourselves and walk away from the pride. Proverbs 21, 19. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. I know many men can relate to this. Angry, contentious wife and they take a little longer coming home from work find other things to do, spend a lot of time in the garage. But we can take this further. Certainly it's, it's the same if you have an angry and contentious husband. We don't want to be dwelling with an individual like that. But let's take this to the woman being the church, the bride, and Christ being the man. A contentious and angry bride, a contentious and angry church, religious organization, it is an organization that's about self. And God says it is better to dwell in the wilderness than with such. And many of us have been part of an organization like this. And he says, come out of it. Come out of it. It's better to be alone in the wilderness seeking God than part of such an organization than to dwell with an angry and contentious woman. Proverbs 22, 24, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. You see, if we walk as friends, we must be in agreement. And an angry man is about himself, not about the Lord. What business do we have being friends with an angry man? if we're seeking the Lord. And that angry man that we're friends with doesn't have to be our father or our brother or our spouse or our buddy at work. It can be our own old man that dwells in us, our self. We can't be friends with our own flesh, the old man nature that's in us. We have to break that off. We need to break those ties. Let the new man be born again in us to be friends with God. You know, the parable of the prodigal son, he came home, what was the older brother? He was angry. 
Why? Because it wasn't in his image. His image was, hey, I've been here. I've been working. I've been faithful. He squandered your inheritance. He ran off. He comes back and you kill the fatted lamb for him. And you have a party for him. Because that son was focused on himself. He wasn't focused on the father's image. The father's image was, I had one son, now I have two. I have one son, now I have two. We need to get out of this mindset that it's all about us. When others come into the kingdom, when they're added in, because the kingdom of God is increasing, we need to rejoice. I'm about finished here. There's a lot more. There's a lot more to this. Um, and I didn't get back to Jonah. There's there's more from that story, but maybe maybe another time if the Lord leads. We'll see. Um, but this is a very pressing issue right now because of what's coming. And we're going to see those who rise up in anger against those who are seeking the image of God. And this is why. Do we want to be one of them? Where do we want to fall? And we need a realistic assessment of where we're at. And we need to seek the Lord to help us get us more and more into that image of Christ and away from that angry man. Because he dwells in all of us. I'll end with one verse here. Ephesians 4.26 Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. If anger rises up, just don't sin. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord to help you find where is it coming from, to deliver you from it, to shine the light on it, so that wherever inside self is still in charge, that land can be given over to the Lord and we can walk in righteousness. Do not hide in the shadows of this world. Do not hide from the sun. Do not let him go down on it. Press into the sun and repent and be healed and let it be cleansed. Will you stand please?